Hello fellow future enthusiasts. On Demystifying, we do deep dives on science, futurism, and speculative technology. My name is Thor, and I will be your host today. We've heard a lot about portals as of late. Locations in physical or mathematical space that allow information or energy to be moved between points. In this video, we're getting to the bottom of X points, an often misunderstood phenomena described by scientists vaguely as portals. At the end, we'll make a new and exciting connection to known propulsion systems, showing how a legacy technology might be demonstrating a known way of harnessing the energy of X points today, not in some distant future. To really understand what these things are, we need to discuss the paradigm faced by modern physics. Scientists are challenged to tackle unexplained aspects of our universe, from gravity to dark matter to other dimensions. In an interview given in the Smithsonian in 2011, Dr. Lisa Randall, professor of science of physics at Harvard, describes the current ideas on how we might interact with other dimensions. Other dimensions interact with our dimensions only via gravity. But at the Large Hadron Collider, we would see evidence of this extra dimension. It's unclear if the Large Hadron Collider will make this discovery anytime soon, though recent detection of neutrinos at the LHC is a sign that we could detect interactions with other dimensions according to the Dark Matter or DM model. To clarify, neutrinos were first detected in 1970 in a particle collision, whereas the LHC was able to detect the background neutrinos that permeate known space in 2021. What are portals, anyway? In science, that depends on the context and who you ask. To some, neutrinos moving faster than light can be interpreted loosely as passing through a portal. This is exampled in papers such as Dark Matter and the Neutrino Paradigm from 2016, where it is hypothesized neutrinos can carry momentum into another dimension where it can interact with dark matter. It does this by moving faster than light in most predictions. In science, the term gateway is also commonly used. In a paper published in Nature in 2021, researchers found they were able to produce a super-scattering metamaterial with interesting properties. When exposed to a microwave source, the material absorbs all energy from the microwave, causing the material to become invisible to the microwave spectrum. They describe this as an invisible gateway. In the quantum realm, they use specialized terms like tunneling to describe some portal-like phenomena. Clearly, the definition of portals in science varies greatly depending on context. But this doesn't mean portals are real, right? If we don't have portals in nature, how do we know teleportation is real at macroscopic scales? The Einstein-Rosen bridge, or simply a wormhole, is a theoretical structure connecting a white and black hole, proposed by Albert Einstein and Nathan Rosen in the 1930s. People have been speculating whether wormholes are possible and whether they could be used to teleport matter for decades. Stephen Hawking claimed Einstein-Rosen bridges could be stabilized, but that introducing matter would instantly collapse them. This is far from the final word on the matter, with recent studies backed by powerful computer technology suggesting space-time loops back on itself, allowing matter to exist in an isolated reference frame inside the wormhole. It doesn't seem like black holes are nearby enough to allow us to travel to them, so unless we figure out how to poke at space-time such to allow teleportation artificially, natural portals will remain theoretical. Or will they? Earth has a system of natural gateways which connect energy at discrete points where the geomagnetic field of the Earth intersects with solar wind from the Sun. These are known as X points, electron diffusion regions, or magnetic reconnection points, and were discovered around the Earth in 2012 by researchers, becoming quickly associated with atmospheric electrical phenomena such as aurora borealis and solar flares. We had actually identified X points since the 1990s with the Polar Satellite Mission, but at the time we had an incomplete image of their mechanisms. Energetic plasma undergoes magnetic reconnection, something that happens when opposite magnetic fields intersect within plasma. Reconnection converts a large amount of the energy in both fields into kinetic and thermal energy in the plasma. The Magnetospheric Multiscale Mission is a cluster of satellites with sensitive magnetic and spectral equipment launched in 2015. MMS will continue collecting data on charged particles emanating from X points until 2040. Its mission is to solve four mysteries outlined in a report written in 2011. This is pretty technical stuff, but don't worry, we'll translate it. 
the non-perturbative size of the guiding center theory's expansion parameters. Guiding center theories, or GCT, is a framework for calculating how particles interact with magnetic fields. Perturbation refers to a point of excitation outside the particle as it interacts with the field. The non-zero size of electron agar trophy that indexes the departure of the pressure tensor from cylindrical symmetry about B. B is used in calculating the momentum of electrons, where it expresses the strength of magnetic fields in the equation E equals negative UEXB. Agar tropy means the electrons experience an uneven polarization. This is the phenomena linked to the notion of portals, since gyrotropic materials are used to create optical isomers, an object which allows light in but not out, which again fits our definition of portals. The order unity electron thermal Mach number required in the current channel of the crossing orbit thickness. Thermal Mach number is a property of moving plasma. Order unity means most plasmas involved in the diffusion region need to have similar amounts of energy. The problem here is that particles must absorb enough energy to cross between atomic orbits. The extremely large electron pressure anistropies that are caused by the inductive electric fields as the particles approach the reduced field strengths of the EDR while still being magnetized. Anistropy just means particles behave differently depending on the direction they are influenced in. We're seeing particles pass through the electron diffusion region with an unexplained directional property which is not explained with local magnetic conditions. These points mean our predictions are not correlating with the energy seen in particles exiting the diffusion region. There are too many particles and they're moving too slowly for our past models to explain. X points are also a phenomena in nuclear fusion and typically manifest inside tokamak reactors where the electromagnetic flux converges. This is how we know reconnection in space is very different from expectations of reconnection on Earth. Most assume intersecting magnetic field boundaries emanating from the Earth and Sun cause a string of plasma to extend from the Sun and ride the solar magnetic field lines, meaning ions physically move from the Sun all the way to Earth. In these terms, you can think of magnetic fields colliding and producing energy at their intersection point as these ions are bombarding Earth. This is not an explanation of X-points, however. It's flawed, even though most people believe this. About every eight minutes, the magnetic fields of the Earth and Sun merge momentarily, creating a large tube-shaped portal approximately four times the size of the Earth and space nearby. Solar wind and other charged particles can flow out of this portal. Sometimes this portal is massive, other times it is smaller and less energetic. Not a stream of particles leaving one body and arriving at another, this is an instant change in mode, allowing highly energetic particles over a distance of over 150 million kilometers to attach to a newly combined magnetic field comprised of both the Earth and Sun. Ionized plasma builds up in the X-point, fed by it, and heated by the kinetic energy of magnetic reconnection. It's important to understand that magnetic reconnection is the only understood mechanism at work here, but does not explain the magnitude of energy produced in these regions. Think of the magnetic field line as a garden hose, and ions leaving the corona are represented as small balls being fed into one end. They fall through the hose, bouncing off the walls and one another as they make their way to the other end. The hose starts to back up because more balls are entering the hose than can flow through it, this causes new balls to push on the entire column of balls. The far end of the hose has become pressurized. The moment more balls are added to one end, the same number exit the other. Our analogy isn't perfect. Ions aren't physically pushing on each other. They are aligned to an altered magnetic field. A consequence of both magnetic fields aligning is reducing virtually all resistance on the ion flow. At least, that's what it looks like. Science doesn't really understand why this works beyond the very recent research into this phenomena, and we'll need to collect more data. Electrical properties of planets are vaguely understood at best. There is a clear mystery behind X-points in science. So, all you want to know is whether it's a true portal or just a particle stream? Well, NASA is calling them portals for a reason. They know the mechanism is unusual. According to principal investigator of Berkeley Space Science Laboratories, for three decades prior to the flight of the Themis mission in 2007, scientists believed explosive instability might have been a cause of electron diffusion regions, not magnetic reconnection with the Sun. 
We don't have much solid data to inform on Earth's X-points, but we do have interesting data on other bodies. X-points have been observed forming around Saturn and Mercury. Mercury has a flux rate three times higher than it should given its apparent magnetic field, so there's a huge amount of energy reaching Mercury that cannot be represented as nearby excited plasma. The planet just can't hold that many ions in its magnetic field. Particles from the corona of the Sun itself are exerting pressure on the planet via mechanisms we barely understand. A breakthrough in this area is probable and may one day be used to propel craft or even transmit data. But wait, this sounds suspiciously like these ions are experiencing anti-gravity, since the dominant force acting on them is in the direction opposite the most massive local object. If these X-points match our scientific definitions of portals, they theoretically allow the rapid transmission of structured energy and data, represented as ions, between fixed points close to the Sun and Earth. Let's change gears and come back down to Earth, to look at a strange but very real phenomena known as the Byfield-Brown effect, expressed as F equals ID over K. F is the net force, I is the current, D is the air gap, and K is the ion mobility of the working fluid, typically air. The effect can be used to produce enough ionic wind to lift a small amount of mass. Ionic wind is simply pressure produced by ions caught in an electromagnetic field. Discovered in the early 1920s, this effect is not well understood even today. The original discoverer, Thomas Brown, claimed this phenomena could produce other effects when enough voltage is used. He called these effects electrogravitics. Research conducted later has supported this notion, since high-voltage systems apparently produce much more force than ion wind alone can provide. Science calls this anomalous thrust, and it's very real. Naturally, people are skeptical of such ideas. This sounds just like anti-gravity after all, and it kind of is. Brown's equations say force is equal to the current times the distance over the ion mobility, recall. Reducing ion mobility to nearly zero should theoretically cause the force to become also almost zero, but it doesn't. Even though they officially say the Byfield-Brown effect is explained by ion wind, in the year 2000 a patent was filed by NASA for a propulsion system using the anomalous thrust, which is explicitly not ion wind. I'm not calling NASA liars, but often the head doesn't talk to the hand in bureaucracy. The patent actually expired following failure to renew, so maybe it was never supposed to be filed in the first place. This is interesting to me. There seems to exist the same confusion over this phenomena as solar X-points. Both systems seem to produce too many ions using interacting magnetic fields. This could be a huge hint that we're missing something fundamental about electricity. We witness the power of X-points frequently and have been doing so throughout all of human history. Are there any certainties about using X-points as a means of developing a new propulsion or transmission system? It depends how we think about gravity. If gravity is related to electricity in ways we don't yet understand, then over 100 years of confusion over electrogravitics will begin to make sense. Another interesting possibility is whether magnetic reconnection happens between stars, theoretically allowing energy transfer on interstellar scales. Recall the words of Dr. Randall, other dimensions interact with our dimensions only via gravity. What if this is only partially true, and electricity is also linked to other dimensions? That's a topic for another day. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Leave a like and a comment with any thoughts or statements that you have. Please subscribe to help grow our audience and recommend us to your friends. Thank you and have a great night.